Let's go over Likud question number 1732, find the highest altitude. Now the problem says there is a biker going on a road trip. The road trip consists of n plus 1 points at different altitudes. So think of a mountain where we go back and forth between a certain point. The biker starts his trip on point zero with an altitude equal to zero. Now you are given an integer array gain of length n. So you're going to have an array with numbers and that's going to have a length of n where gain at index i is the net gain in altitude between points i and i plus 4. So let's say that you were here and let's say that this is altitude 0 and this is the initial point. Now if you were to go up here, let's say this is altitude 3, there will be plus 3 altitude. And if you were to go down, there will be, I don't know, let's say minus 2. So this is altitude 1 and so on and so forth. So we are going back and forth between some different altitudes. And these change or gains in altitude is represented by our array. And this is our example array. We turn the highest altitude of a point. So if we were to look at our just arbitrary example over here, highest point would be this, right? So that would be point 3, altitude of 3. Now, we have to find the highest altitude of a point given a gain array. So let's try to draw that out. Let's say that this is altitude 0. At first, we're going to go down by 5. We go up by 1 and then we go up again by 5. So this is negative 5. This is plus 1, plus 5. And then it's 0. So that's constant. So we don't gain any altitudes. And then we go down all the way to 7. So this will be 0. and this will be minus 7. Now, what's our highest altitude point? Well, it's over here, right? Because we started at altitude of 0, we went down by 5, we went up by 1, and then we went up by another 5. So that's negative 5 plus 1 plus 5, which is 1. So this is altitude 1. Over here, it will be altitude negative 6 because from 1, we went down negative 7. This is the basic concept of this problem. Now, I can think of two ways to solve this. So first one is I can store all the altitudes as I go through my gains array. So this is what we are going to have later. We're going to have an array of our altitudes, negative 4, 1, 1, and 6. And this makes sense. Why? It's because we start at 0. So we have our 0. We went down by 5. So that's negative 5. That's our second element. And then we went up by 1. So that's negative 4. We went up by 5. So that's 1. And then we didn't move at all. So that's another 1. And we went down by 7. So that's at negative 6. That's where we get this altitudes array. From here, we want to find the highest. And we can do that by finding the maximum value, right? So first solution, I can try to get an array of my altitudes and find the maximum value there. Or second solution would be I can store my current altitude to a variable, compare that to my max altitude. And if current is greater, obviously I'm going to overwrite my max altitude. And we do that for all the gains. And finally, we turn our max, which is going to be 1. But obviously, the solution 2 is better, right? Why is that? It's because if you were to use or store array of our altitudes, that's going to give us a space complexity of O of n. Whereas for second solution, we just have two variables, our current altitude and our max altitude. So that's going to give us space complexity of O of 1. But we are going to implement both, starting with this one and then move on to this one, just to see how this whole thing plays out. And it should be a really good learning exercise. If you guys find this helpful, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Thanks. Now let's go over our first solution. And like I said before, our first solution isn't going to be as optimal because it's going to have a space complexity of O of N. And that's because what we're going to do is we want to store the altitudes in an array and then find the maximum altitude in that array. If you were to make an array of our inputs, that would be taking O of N space, right? So that's going to be less optimal than our other solution. But let's code this because it's a good exercise. And this one had runtime of this and memory usage of this. 
So it's not as efficient, obviously. So first thing we are going to do is we are going to create a variable to store our altitudes and let's name it altitudes. And we're going to set it to an array, but we're going to pass in a value of zero. And why do we have to pass in a value of zero? Well, that's because we are starting at index or point zero, altitude of zero. So we want to have that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to iterate through my gains array, starting at index zero. So we iterate through all the elements and later we are going to return the maximum value. So we're going to return math.max and we're going to spread all the elements in our array, which is altitudes array. And later we're going to get our max, but our core function lies in this for loop, right? What we're going to do is we want to push into our altitude array some values and that's going to be the change in the values so we start at altitude at index i we start at the first index of our altitudes array which is zero and i just renamed this to altitudes i think that's more intuitive okay so we're gonna look at our element at the altitudes array and we are going to just add our net gain or loss from the gains array so that's going to be gain at index i. Now that's pretty much it for our solution. And you can see that our maximum altitude was one and zero for this one. Well, let's just console log this and see how it worked. So let's just console log our altitudes first. So if you were to console log that, you can see that we started at zero and then we went down by five. If you were to look at our input array, our first value is negative five. So zero plus negative five is negative five. So in our altitudes array, we're going to have negative five. And we went up by one. So negative five plus one is negative four. And then negative four plus five is one. And then one plus zero is one. And finally, it's going to be one plus negative seven which is going to be negative seven and if you want to see that actually you have to move this under here and that's what we have for our first input from this array what we're going to do is find the max by using the math.max operator and we get our result this is exactly the same as our illustration that we made we start with zero we keep adding in the change in gain or loss of the altitude and then we finally just return the maximum altitude that's in the array so that's it for our first solution and let's just try to code a different solution just for fun now let's code our second solution and for our second solution the runtime memory is pretty much the same and that's because we will still keep using the extra space for our elements to store our altitudes so for this one what i'm going to do is i'm going to use reduce method but the logic of this whole problem is going to be the same. So math.max. First, I'm returning the maximum value. But inside that math.max function, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread all the elements that I'm going to get. And I'm going to run reduce function on the gains array and pass in accumulator and current value and index. So in this array, what I'm going to do is I'm going to push to my accumulator array and I'm going to pass in my current value plus accumulator at index i. So this is actually exactly the same as our for loop, which is this line over here. And I'm going to give an initial value of same thing, altitudes array filled with just one zero for now. So that's going to be over here, give it a value of zero. And then we have to return our accumulator. So you can see that we have our same result. If this is confusing, first thing we're doing is we are returning our math.max so we are doing the same thing this line is same thing as this one instead of a for loop we are using videos and our accumulator is this altitudes array filled with zero which we have over here and then we are pushing our element so current value is going to represent gain at index i and accumulator at index i is going to represent the elements in our altitudes array which is going to be stored in this one over here. So that's it for our second solution. It's shorter, but it still gives us the same time complexity, which is O of n and space complexity of O of n for both of these. And the time complexity is O of n because we are iterating through all the elements in our array. And our space complexity is also O of n because we are creating an auxiliary variable to store our altitude now let's try to optimize our solutions now let's go over our another solution and for this one what we're going to do is we're going to 
optimize our space complexity. This one is going to have a space complexity of 001. The reason is because again, we are not creating an auxiliary variable to store our altitude. Instead, we are just going to keep the maximum altitude in a variable and a current altitude in a variable. And we are going to use those two variables to compare which one is bigger. And if current altitude had been to be bigger than our current maximum, we are going to overwrite our maximum altitude with the current one. So first thing I'm going to do is I am going to create two variables. So let's call it max and we're going to set that equal to zero. And then we are going to make a variable named current altitude and set this equal to zero also. And the reason why it starts at zero is because we start at altitude of zero. For this one, let's just use our for loop. So for let i is equal to zero, let's set array.length and we're going to increment by one each time. Next, what we're going to do is let's just return our max here. Well, one thing I do want to point out right now is that, well, we don't have to use math.max function to get the maximum value, right? We just have to return this maximum variable, so which is good, right? It's less work. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get current altitude. So that's going to be equal to game index i plus the current altitude. So if I were to just console log my current altitude, and I actually made a mistake here. It should be lowercase a. Oh, it should be a gain. Okay, so let's just uncomment this. And you can see that our current altitude is what we got for our altitudes array. So negative 5, negative 4, 1, 1, and 6. This makes sense because we start at negative 5. And if you were to add 1 to that, it would be negative 4. If you were to add 5 to negative 4, it would be 1. At 0, it's 1. Minus 7 is negative 7. So instead of having an array with our altitudes, we are just storing that to a variable. And that variable is our current altitude. Now, we need to be able to save our maximal altitude into a variable. And to do that, we are going to store it into a max. Now, we need to check one thing to store the maximum altitude. So if current altitude is greater than max, so that means that whatever we have for our maximum altitude right now, that's smaller than our current one. So what we do is we just overwrite it with the current altitude. If you were to do that, we get our result. And if you want to uncomment this, we get our result here. So that looks good. So this one isn't really as hard as our first solution. We just used a different logic where we just store the current altitude into variable instead of the array. And we just compare. Is the current one bigger than the maximum? If it is, we just override it. And we keep doing that until we iterate to all the elements in our array. And finally, we turn that maximum altitude later. And this one had a runtime that's kind of similar, but had a better memory usage. So less space, hence why it's 001. If you guys find this helpful, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Thanks.